Traditional roles in the community. Ogama, chief, Ogama. Naganit, leader, Naganit, leader. Naganjuk, leaders, Naganjuk, leaders. Ogamak, chiefs, Ogamak. Naganit, that word Naganit comes from the word Nigani, which means to lead or go out front, Nigani. And the Naganit is the one who leads. Naganit, Naganjuk are those that lead, Naganjuk. Now, Ogama is kind of an interesting word because we didn't have just one chief that kind of controlled everything for the tribe long ago. You had different uh, clans that would have different leaders. And so oftentimes it would take like 30 or 40 different uh, chiefs or headmen uh, to come to an understanding before you had like an agreement or a treaty or something like that because there wasn't this one universal leader, which... Um, European powers were used to dealing with like a, a king or somebody that, you know, one person that could kind of make a decision for everybody. But within the Potawatomis and within native people in general, you tended to have multiple leaders at different levels. So you had, you know, leaders within the clans or the villages. And then you also had leaders that were there for certain periods of time. Maybe they were a leader during wartime or a leader during peace um, or different periods of time. So one more time, Ogama, Ogama. Chief, Ogama, Naganit, Naganit, leader, Naganit, Naganjuk, Naganjuk, leaders, Naganjuk, Ogamak, Ogamak, chiefs, Ogamak, Gjatini, a warm weather or southern person, this is another name sometimes referred to for citizen Potawatomi, Gjatini, Shishibani, Shishibani, Citizen Potawatomi, it literally means duck people, Shishibani. And that Shishibani comes from um, a long time ago. There's two different stories that I've heard. One, that um, early on when a lot of our people were being converted to Catholicism by the, the Jesuit priests, they would tie this, this handkerchief or neck scarf around folks that had been converted. And they said that it made folks look like a certain type of duck. And it was their way of knowing that that person had already been converted. Um, the other one is that our people were always by the waters, always by the rivers, that we were really um, good in the water, so like ducks in the water. Shishibani. Shishibani. And both these words are singular, so it'd be like a Shishibani Ndao. I'm Citizen Bonami, but the tribe as a whole, you know, would be Shishibani Yuk. Shishibani Yuk, or if you're using Gajatani, Gajatani Yuk. Mshkodani, Mshkodani is the prairie band Potawatomi, Mshkodani. Literally the people of the burnt over piece of ground or prairie. That word Mshkode, Mshkode means prairie, but literally means an area that's been burnt over. Because a long time ago they used to set the prairies on fire to kind of get the nutrients into the soil. Either that or they'd accidentally catch fire and they would burn larger sections of land. So that's why it's called Mshkode. Mishkode for prairie, that burnt over area. Mishkode, Mishkodani, Mishkodani. And then the plural of that would be Mishkodani Yuk. Mishkodani Yuk. Kasenyani, Kasenyani, cold weather Potawatomi. It's usually used for Forest County Potawatomi up in Wisconsin. Kasenyani, Kasenyani, Kasenyani. And there's some other terms that uh, that we don't have on the page here, like Wigwas, uh, Wigwas ZB, when uh, Wigwas, uh, Wigwas ZB, Winnie, which is like uh, birch bark people for like Hannibal Potawatomis, Nadawa uh for Huron Potawatomis, um, Pokaganuk, Pokagani for Pokagan Potawatomis, um, Machapaneshiwash for Gun Lake Potawatomis or Bad Bad Bird Potawatomis, uh, Machapaneshiwash. Um, but for now, these ones here, Gajatani, Gajatani, warm weather, Gajatani, Shishibani, Shishibani, Mishkodani, Mishkodani, Kasinyani, Kasinyani. Shkesh is their first, third, fifth, and seventh born children. Shkesh is the color, it's also associated with the color blue, which is associated with your first, third, fifth, and seventh born children. Kishko, 
Kish Kol, that's your second, fourth, sixth, and eighth born children. And red is associated with that second, fourth, sixth, and eighth born child. So the reason we broke up like this was because it was when we did games or activities or we went to war, we split up into our um, our firstborns and our, and our secondborn, fourthborn groupings. The reason was if an entire war party was wiped out, you know, you didn't lose all of your children in one kind of uh, failed attempt. And then also when we played games, whether they be stickball or other uh, competitive games, you didn't create a lot of animosity within the community. You didn't have one family pitted against another family. You had you know, the first and third and fifth borns, the second, fourth, sixth borns split up like that to, again, not create animosity. Shkesh, 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 first, third, fifth, and seventh born. Kishko, Kishko, second, fourth, sixth, and eighth born. Ah. Uh Mshkukkionane, Mshkukkionane, medicine man, Mshkukkionane. And this is also the word that we use for a doctor. It literally means a medicine man or a medicine person, if you will. But it's also the word we use for a doctor. But there also were different types of medicine people traditionally. You didn't have kind of a one shoe fits all type of, of medicine person. And usually we'd call them uh, um, healers or um, uh, something along those lines versus just the general term medicine man. We'd call them a healer or uh, um, depending on what type of uh, healer they were. You had some people that would heal with just herbs that would just find certain plants and, and remedies and things in nature that they would use. You had other people that would do ceremonies where they would call in uh, um, spirits, if you will, and ask for help to try to heal people of certain ailments and things like that. But there were different types of medicine people or healers. Nane. Pawagan Nane is a pipe carrier. Pawagan Nane. Pawagan is a pipe. And there's also different types of pipe carriers. There was a, a pipe that a person would have that would be more of a personal pipe that they would just carry maybe with their family. Then you had people that would carry what was called a nation pipe, which was more like a pipe that was for the people as a whole. And usually people would go out and they would fast in order to have the rights to hold on to these different, to have these pipes and things like that. And these pipes were just tools that were used in prayer. Pawagan nane. Shkabewas. Shkabewas is a helper or an assistant. And we use this word shkabewas in a variety of different ways. Um, there were lots of different beliefs that Potawatomi's held on to uh, long ago, and some many of many of these beliefs that we still hold on today. But um, some Potawatomi practice, for example, something called big drum religion. This is not related to powwows at all, but it's a separate type of belief. Um, and a lot of times, in part of this big drum, they will call the, uh, the second person the shkabewas, the helper. Uh, also, some Potawatomi's practice what's called med it's called Medewin, uh, or Grand Medicine Lodge, and inside of the Medicine Lodge, they would have these different helpers or assistants that they would call Shkabewas. In this picture, you can see we're putting up a sweat lodge, a Medodao Gumguk, to run a, a ceremony. Uh, this was put up uh, many, many years ago. So, uh -huh. Deweget. Deweget is a drummer. Deweget. And then Dewegejuk are drummers. Dewegejuk are drummers. That word dewege, um, that means to pound on something, dewege. And the drum itself is called dewegen. It's that thing. And, and de literally means your heart. De is your heart. Wei is a sound. And then gen is that thing. So it's that thing that sounds like a heartbeat. Um, and for a lot of tribes, they call the drum kind of the heartbeat of Native America. And within our tribe, that word for that drum literally does mean the sound of that heartbeat, that dewegen. And then dewegen is someone who drums or a drummer, dewe get, dewe get juk. And there's different types of drums that we have uh, traditionally. We have the, the bigger style powwow drums that you see a lot of dances and things like that. And usually with powwow de wagons or powwow drums, it's usually men that sit at the drum. And then sometimes women will back them up in, in a role where they'll call them uh, songbirds where they'll kind of help the, the melody and help everyone sound a little bit better. And then we also have nech dewegget, nech dewegget, or hand drummers, nech dewegget, nech dewegejuk, nech dewegejuk, hand drummers, plural. And hand drums are a little different. Uh, women and men can both play hand drums. And in fact, we have a women's hand drum group at the tribe, and there's a number of ladies that enjoy playing the hand drum. Uh, and men also play the hand drums. Uh, we also have a, a third type of drum, which is called a water drum. 
uh, that's used with Medewin type uh, beliefs. Uh, there's not a lot of folks uh, in Oklahoma that I'm aware of that that still use that uh, that water drum, but that's a, another style of drum. And like I was saying before, there's also some people in Kansas and Wisconsin who practice what's called uh, big drum, or, or sometimes those call it drum doings. And with that, that's a different style of drum as well. It's it's very similar looking to a powwow drum, but it's certainly not a powwow drum. It's not something that would be pulled out uh, at a powwow uh, event, if you will. It's it's for ceremony. So, how we always ho held our warriors in very high regard. So we have a number of words for warrior or soldier. Shamaganeshi, shamaganeshi. Now this is literally it's in reference to that long uh, shamagan or saber that would be at the end of a, of a flint musket. If you if you know about the old style muskets, they used to put the the little end on the end. And they would charge the enemy if they ran out of weapon, uh, bullets. So it had like a knife type blade on the end of it, and that's where that word shamaganeshi comes from. They're the ones who carried those uh, those those blades, if you will. Shamaganeshi. That's a word for soldier. Ogichida. Ogichida is a warrior. Ogichida. Ogichida. Menzabe is a great warrior. Menzabe. And like I said, we always held our warriors in, in high regard. Um, oftentimes we would do things like count coup where you actually wouldn't actually kill an enemy. You would just basically get close enough where you could tap an enemy and walk away. That was a lot more honorable even than killing somebody. Um, because you had that ability to take that person's life, but you chose not to, and they still couldn't get the best of you, even though you were right there by them. So, um, and oftentimes at like powwows and other things, that they'll have our veterans will come in and they'll carry our colors in, or I'll carry our flags in. And when they carry a flag in, sometimes it's the American flag, but they also carry what's called a um, uh, usually a nation flag that has like an eagle staff, an eagle staff that'll come in usually with it. Um, I hope. Shamaganeshi, Shamaganeshi, a soldier, Shamaganeshi, Ogichida, Ogichida, warrior, Ogichida, Menzabe, Menzabe, great warrior, Menzabe, Il.